Hello and welcome to the third video in our Pixhawk 2.1 series. In this video, we're going to actually put all the technology inside this airplane here. Now, this is a UAV Mini Talon. Uh, it could fit pretty much in anything, although in the original videos that you've probably already seen in the series, the Pixhawk looked quite big. It's actually not as bad as it looks. And the great thing about this particular model is there's loads of room inside. Not only can I fit everything in, but I can also film it so I can show you how it all goes together. Now, the original idea for this third video in the series was for me to do two things. One, to show you how to connect everything up and pop it inside your model. And then the second was to go through the basic configuration and make sure that things like the control surfaces work in the right way, set up the V-tail and other pieces too. Now, as I'm recording this video, the thing that's causing me a little bit of problem is that the two versions of software that fully support Pixhawk 2.1 are, as of the recording, still in beta. And that's Ardu Copter 3.5, which you need for things like multi-rotors with this thing, or with Ardu Plane, which is what I need for this model, I need version 3.8. And what I'm trying to do is wait until 3.8 is officially released, and then do the video with that proper gold released version because occasionally in the past when I've used software that wasn't quite released things have changed when it actually came out and that's meaning that the video became quite confusing for anyone that's trying to follow along. So in this video what we're going to do is really concentrate on actually how you get all the technology inside the chassis. So by the end of this, we'll be ready to update the version of Ardu Plane to 3.8 and go through the calibration steps. Now, the calibration steps are exactly the same as you would go through if you were going to do something with a standard Pixhawk with an APM. And we've looked at the calibration routine, things like going through the wizard, although the wizard actually is a lot nicer these days, but it takes you through the same steps where you go through the accelerometer calibration, you have to put the model in each orientation, down, facing up, to the left, to the right, nose down, nose up and on its back. You also do the compass calibration, that thing where you whiz it around and the little dots appear on the screen and you also do the radio calibration and mode and failsafe setup too. So if you are interested in kind of getting ahead of the series a little bit, the documentation at the moment for Ardu Plane is also a little bit out of date. So for example, one of the things that you have to do in order to change the V-tail setting so that the V-tail actually works on the Pixhawk 2.1 is there are a number of things that you have to change and it covers it actually in the Ardu Pilot website. But I believe in 3.8, they're not called RC1, RC2, RC3, and that's talking about the outputs. They're going to be called Servo1, Servo2, Servo3, etc., which would actually make a lot more sense, which is part of the reason why I'm just holding on for that bit. So in the next video, we'll go through the full setup right from the very beginning. We'll go through the wizard, do everything. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll go through how to be ready for that next video. So when 2.8 is out, you can install it and go through the wizard as quickly as possible, get to the other end and have your plane ready to go and trim. So the first thing we need to think about is where to place the actual flight controller itself. Now, ideally, you want it as close to the center of gravity as possible. That's the same for all flight controllers. The Pixhawk is no different. And I've put mine kind of in between the two wings. Now there are sticky pads that come as part of the kit and you can pop it on there. I've also seen people actually build a shelf between these two struts inside this mini talon and that's also a really good idea to mount it too. But I've mounted mine at the bottom of the chassis and tried to route all of the other cables around it to minimize any kind of interference or the chance of a cable knocking it and causing a problem. Next thing to do is mount the GPS compass away from the buzzer. Uh, I've mounted mine in the nose. I'm gonna see how this actually works because it is a little bit close to the FPV gear, but we'll see how it works in practice. I might end up moving the compass to the rear of the plane or actually onto the top of the hatch that's removable to get to the inside of the vehicle but you do want to make sure that it is nice and far away from all the electronics particularly things like the ESC and all the high power pieces too because any electromagnetic interference is going to affect the compass in the GPS and that will affect the accuracy and performance of the GPS flight modes. 
Of course, as you're putting this thing together, just double check with the battery you intend to use. We're going to use that lithium ion pack that we looked at a couple of weeks ago for a nice long flight time with this vehicle. But do make sure that as you're putting these things in, that you are managing to keep track of the central gravity and with the pack that you're going to use, with all this extra gubbins in your plane, that you're going to be okay. Because the other thing that I did is I did push the ESC right into the tail as far away from all the rest of the electronics as possible. So all that high power switching and high frequency is going on well out the way of the PIX hook and also the GPS itself. One thing to think about though is the USB connector. Now the USB connector is at the side. We had a look at that in the first video and that's where you need to plug it in to connect it to the computer. Now in a future video we'll probably end up popping some telemetry radios on here and we'll go through the setup but for now we're going to want to plug in USB cables with a very long cable so that you can do all the calibration and setup steps without having to worry about messing around with radios too. The challenge with that, of course, is once you put the Pixhawk in down in the guts of an airplane frame, then you won't be able to get access to that USB connector. The USB connector would have almost been better to have on the top of the cradle itself rather than stuck out the side. So what I've done is I've bought a little USB extension cable and I've plugged that into the side and then tie wrapped that onto one of the struts inside the plane itself. So I plug my USB cable into there and that allows me to still do my updates and changes and all those bits and pieces as well. I'd recommend if you're going to put something like a Pix hook down in the guts of your airplane that you get hold of one of these little cables. Uh, I'd hope that in the future the Pix hook guys actually start to ship this with the kit because it's actually something that I imagine that lots of pilots are going to need. So now we've got all that stuck in and again I'm just using the double sided foam at the moment to mount all this stuff in here then we also need to connect up the different pieces together the radio receiver power module GPS compass buzzer and control surfaces now in the first video we looked at how to plug the majority of this together and it's exactly the same process but obviously we'll be routing cables and being very cognizant of the fact that we're going to have to be able to get in and out of here for maintenance and we're also have to go to get in and out of the chassis for things like battery installation and stuff for flying too and of course we're going to make sure that the prop is installed on the model as we go through all of this until we are ready to go and fly. We don't want accidentally to fire up the motor on the table when we're playing around with a USB cable because that is going to get exciting very very quickly. But the tips that I would give you for this is always go onto the rdpilot.org site and look at the latest documentation. I'm hoping this is going to be updated when 2.8 comes out because at the moment I'm having to kind of interpolate between what it says in the manuals on RD Pilot and what 2.8 does because 2.8 has all of the great stuff for RD Plane that we're going to need to actually fly. Once we've got all that in the next video what we'll do is we'll complete the basic setup so we'll calibrate the compass accelerometer radio calibration check the fail safes we'll also set up the flight modes and we'll configure the elevons and v-tail if needed check direction of the control surfaces using manual mode uh, the trick with that is that you have to make sure that you've pressed the little button on the gps so that the pix hawk is alive or armed uh, if it isn't pressed in and armed then you won't get any movement on the control surfaces at all then check the movement of the correction so we're going to move the plane around and make sure that the elevators and the rudder control surfaces and everything else is moving to correct that uncommanded movement trim the center of servos and do the rest the Last tip for this video is how you actually set up the radio. Now, the Pixhawk really wants to have the channel order as shown here in the image. So I'm using a PPM receiver just for this initial testing and to get this set up and to get through the calibration with the software, this is how I've had to have it set up. So the first four channels and the main flight channels, but make sure that they are in this order, otherwise then they'll be operating the wrong uh, channels inside Ardu plane. You can change the mapping around, but it's just easier if you have something like a Tyrannus to just pop them in this order in the first place. And for me, I had to put my mode channel on channel eight so that it was red in the Pixhawk and I could select the different flight modes. I initially am going to set it up as something like manual, fly-by-wire and potentially something like GPS hold as well. 
So join me for the next video where we'll actually plug this little guy in and uh, I'm going to give it another week or two, hopefully 3.8 for our new plane will be out by then and we can go and use the latest software or otherwise we'll just bite the bullet and we'll do it and I'll just have to caveat the video to say that if you're doing this with the final version of 2.8 it might be slightly different. So let's keep our fingers crossed that by the time I get there 2.8 is out and we can use the latest and greatest. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.